How much would you pay to read someone's mind? Well, this week we discovered that Facebook has paid somewhere between 500 million US dollars and a billion US dollars for a company that have generated what that's called a neural interface wristband. They're called Control Labs. And exactly what the hell is any of that? Well, we have Claire Riley from CNET and we have VR expert Jesse Hughes here. Can someone explain this to me, please? Suppose we can start with the dream of what it is. So I was thinking about that scene from Matilda. Does everyone know that scene from Matilda? And she's like staring at the cereal box to move the cereal and fill up her bowl with cereal, oh, move the milk. Yeah. And it's this, it's this scene that I remember watching when I was a kid and the dream was to have telekinesis. And so I think like that is something that we believe is a superpower. And yet we have the technology that it's Beginning. It is beginning. Um, so what we're talking about with these neural interfaces is using um, brain activity to be able to convert that into computer input. Mm. The bands that they're talking about, it goes on your on your wrist. Um, and what it does, it, it tracks your electrical activity with like muscles. And so if you imagine spreading out all your fingers right now and oh, then yeah. and then closing your hand, but in your brain, imagining spreading out all your fingers again, we're focusing really hard. In our brain, we're, we're trying to convince our fingers to move without physically moving them. And so what these bands are doing is it's, it's tracking and monitoring that activity and then it's trying to put that into a computer. And so what these guys have done is what we just explained with the hands, able to do that as a visual model. Um, but eventually we're thinking, what else can we do with this? Like, can I be sitting at work, slouched away in my chair and be controlling my mouse? Um, is that something that's possible without actually moving? I know it sounds pretty, it sounds pretty insane, but um, I yeah. Mean, I can see all of the value in it, particularly for people, <laughs> uh, particularly for uh, disabilities. I can absolutely yeah. see the value of it. I can also see it making us tremendously lazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Wally is the future, everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's just funny because a lot of some, well, I guess the real question is what is Facebook's interest in this kind of technology? A lot of massive technology companies are finding different ways to place big bets on uh, cutting edge technology. So this is the most Facebook has spent on a buying another company since I think Oculus, Oculus yeah. yeah, the purchase of Oculus, which was virtual reality. It was kind of cutting edge. They had their, I think it was building eight was their kind of development lab where they tried to develop hardware, but we didn't really see anything out of that except for like this video screen. Um, so I think they're trying to make big bets. The value for them is getting in on the front foot and sort of being at the vanguard and saying, we we bought this when it was small, spending a lot of money for sure. But if this becomes the way that we interact 20, 30 years down the track, then they have spent barely any money at all. It's, it's chump change if this becomes the next cutting edge technology. I think it's interesting because it looks at motor movement and it's about, you know, how we control things, devices, move muscles. You know, when they said it's a mind reading wristband, I was like, the first thing someone yeah. said to me was, why does, I don't want Facebook to know what I'm about to post on my wall before I do. And I was like, yeah, that's terrible. Oh, wait, that's absolutely not, not what's what happening. It is. Yeah. Um, but I think these brain-computer inf interfaces are becoming kind of the next step in really advanced technology. We know that Elon Musk had his um, Neuralink presentation in the last couple of months talking about a similar device, but that one taps directly into your brain, care of a small hole drilled in your skull. No, thank um, you. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think a massive appeal with this technology as well is the fact that it is non-invasive. Um, the mm -hmm. technology that you were talking about, um, yeah, it had to go you know, inside of you, whereas now we've got external solutions that we can still engage with our technology without actually becoming a cyborg, mm. which is exciting. Um, one, of my, one of my friends, she runs a company called Helium and what they do is it's for people with anxiety um, and you put on the headset, so the VR headset, and you go into this calm space and you wear an EEG band that's tracking like your focus, your engagement, and you can grow a garden just by looking at the ground and focusing and being really peaceful and mindful and these flowers start to grow and it's using... Um, um, your brain activity and your heart rate and that kind of stuff. Wow. And so you're actually building these virtual worlds around you using biometrics, which is just amazing. Mm. Well, that's the thing is like we we have 
in our physical lives and then we have our digital lives. And I think this technology is bridging that. It's mm. bringing them together in a very matrixy way. Um, right now we're seeing it as quite a scientific laboratory style technology, but maybe five to 10 years, this is how we engage with our computers. This is how we engage with our phones. I was reading an article in Scientific American about uh, control labs and the technology that they're working on. And, you know, that idea of say the bicep and all these, um, the single motor neuron on your spine and how it kind of controls different parts of your body, you could potentially, instead of having, you know, five fingers, you could have a sort of an electrical impulse controlling 12 fingers. So you can play the piano <laughs> with 12 fingers on one hand, 12 fingers on the other hand, and you would have to rewire your brain in the same way that, you know, you learn to touch type with five ha- fingers instead of just pecking away with um, mm. one finger as... My mum still does yeah, that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to call out people I know, but then I was like, no. <laughs> um, but it's just it's that... A good, it's a good venue to name and shame. Yeah, yeah, right? It's that rewiring and relearning and that's all very possible. So maybe it won't be that we become super lazy. Maybe it'll be that we actually become way more stimulated because suddenly it's not like you're limited to a mouse and a keyboard. Suddenly you're typing with 10 fingers. 10 fingers? (laughs) Whoa, imagine. Um, (laughs) Typing with 20 fingers, you're using two mice and you've got like other digital inputs and controls. I just imagine it's probably just going to make us more stressed because we'll be able to do much more. And then we can go into our virtual gardens and grow flowers (laughs) and calm down. Yeah, Yeah, hook me up with your friend. (laughs) There's lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. We're also talking about three words that can find you anywhere in the world. What are those three words? Well, you'll just have to get the podcast and find out. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye.